Here are my sales from August 2020, and now here are my sales from August 2021. That is almost a 10x increase year over year, and I am so excited about it. My name is Ashley, and I'm a reseller based in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing what sold on Poshmark in August 2021, what changed from 2020 to 2021, trends, goals, and at the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing a really exciting announcement that I'm so glad I don't need to keep secret anymore. August was a great month for reselling. Not only was it a great month for reselling, but it was also just a good month for me personally. I took some time off and went to Ottawa to visit some of my very favorite people and it was so relaxing and rejuvenating and exactly what I needed. I loved seeing friends, having a change of pace, and a change of scenery after being in Toronto since February 2020. I was gone for four days and put my closet on vacation mode for two of those days. I opened it back up on the Monday and then came back on the Tuesday night and started to ship out orders on Wednesday. And to be honest, it didn't really have that much of an impact on my sales, which was great. My gross revenue was $2,754 with 81 items sold and nine bundles. So that is a huge increase over last year. Last August, when I was reselling part-time, I had $299 in gross revenue and 10 items sold. I only listed five items last August, and it was also a huge period of transition for me, and I was part-time. But it is still wild for me to think how much can change in a year, and it makes me really excited to see what's possible for the rest of 2021 and heading into 2022. In August, my average sales price was $34, and my sell-through rate was just over 20%. I listed 137 items, which is down a bit from last month. Most of those items were new, and some of them were relisted items that just were getting stale. I only went thrifting once. I'm pretty sure it was only once, but I got a ton of new inventory from consignment clients. Rather than take you through all 81 items, I'm just going to share the items that were over $40 that sold, including some really cool bundles. So you know when you're on Poshmark and you start to see people liking items and maybe adding them into a bundle and you're like, is this real? Are you just doing that? Are you actually gonna do anything with it? And I had that happen on the 1st of August. Someone started adding a ton of things to a bundle and they stopped and I was like, okay, let's try something. And they were a lot of higher priced items. There was a Valentino bucket hat, there was a pair of sparkly Doc Martens, and there was a pair of Melissa by Vivian Westwood sandals that I had just listed. The bundle had five items total and I sent an offer for $399 with free shipping and the buyer accepted. I was like, oh, hi, August, thanks for coming out. The item I was most excited about in there was the Valentino bucket hat. I had gotten that in my Quick Lots half palette and it had gotten attention and a couple of lowball offers, but I wanted to hold out because I knew it was worth more than what people were offering. So there was the Valentino bucket hat, the sparkly Doc Martens that were gorgeous, the really cool Melissa by Vivian Westwood sandals. There was also a Billie Eilish tour beanie. It was just like a black beanie with a little logo. Found out it was from the Billie Eilish tour. And then there was also this white baseball cap with a face shield on it that came in my Quick Lots half palette. Such a 2021 item. Anyway, all of those items sold for $399 with free shipping and I was thrilled and I felt like the month was off to a great start. Also, at that point, my gross revenue was higher than it had been the August prior, so I knew we were going to have a record-breaking month. Another piece that sold over $40 was this Aritzia Erin Briney, Erin Brinney dress that was new with tags. It had been in my closet for a while and I had recently relisted it. It was a piece that I had thrifted and I think I just got excited because I saw an Aritzia new with tags piece. It was a great basic and a really lovely short sleeve t-shirt dress that had some unique details, but it didn't go anywhere and it just sat there for a long time. So I relisted it. This buyer sent an offer for $45 and I accepted. And even after relisting it, that took 85 days to sell. I loved this bundle of two dresses that sold for $75. The first was a piece from my personal closet. I love the brand Smash and Tess. In some of my videos, I've worn rompers, and if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen me in a romper. They have amazing pieces. They're designed and made in Canada, and I just love them, especially for every day and wearing around the house. This was one of my early Smash and Test pieces that I purchased. It was the Sunday dress in black. It's just a short sleeve t-shirt dress, and I liked it, but I just wasn't wearing it as much anymore, and because I've brought some other rompers into my closet, I decided to put this dress up on Poshmark. 
It sold with a really pretty kimchi blue smocked dress that I had picked up while thrifting, and both of those pieces sold for $75. The smash and test dress took 61 days to sell, and the kimchi blue dress took just 25 days to sell. One of the trends I started to see in August was that people were looking for pieces for colder weather, and so this was a bundle of scarves that sold. The first was one that I had gotten in a mystery box. It was from the brand Ecote, which... Ecote? 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 We'll call it Ecote. I don't know. Anyway, it was a cream infinity scarf, very soft. It sold with this Steward of Scotland plaid cashmere fringe scarf that I got in my Quick Lots half palette. Those sold in a bundle for $42, and it was just neat to start to see those winter accessories start moving. I feel like as I'm making this video, the light is changing in my office, and for that, I'm sorry. I was really excited when this item sold because it was the first piece to sell from one of my new consignment clients. I did a video recently where I talked a bit more about consignment and I'll be sure to link that in the description, but I got so many gorgeous pieces from this client and this Banana Republic dress was one of them. It was a royal blue lace sheath dress. It had like laser cut lace. It was so beautiful and it just made me feel good that people are buying fancier things for special occasions again. This sold for $40 on an offer to like her and took just one day to sell. Have you sold many Trina Turk pieces? I picked up this coat while doing some retail arbitrage and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. I nearly kept it, but I thought better of it and decided to post it on Poshmark. It was a gorgeous black long sleeve coat, belted, had like a really gorgeous collar, and I knew that it was perfect for fall. The buyer and I chatted a bit about price, but we landed at $130 and that took 41 days to sell. As I talked about my July video, I'm starting to see jeans sell, especially as we head towards fall. I'm still seeing skinny styles being popular. I'm still wearing skinny styles. I think there's a lot of people out there, but also looking at straight leg, wide leg, and boyfriend fit. These were a pair of rag and bone Dre slim boyfriend fit jeans. They were in a size 25 and they sold for $40 on an offer to Liker. And those took 49 days to sell. I don't pick up a ton of Forever 21, but there was a few Forever 21 pieces that were new with tags in my consignment client's haul. These were a pair of really pretty basic skirts from Forever 21 in a size extra large. There was a full skirt that was lined and then a cream skirt that had like these ribbon stripes on it. Those two skirts sold for $45 in a bundle and they had just been listed for three days. Would you wear floral pants? I did a poll on my Instagram stories and people seemed to be mixed, but I thought these pants were gorgeous. They were pink floral wide leg pants from Banana Republic and they were in a size 16. They sold for $52 on an offer to Liker and those also took three days to sell. I sold a bunch of Kate Spade accessories in August and this belt was one of them. It was a really unique belt. So if you've ever been to a show or even just like participate in a raffle, you know those little tickets, they often come in different pastel colors. And so it was a belt with green little tickets and it was just so unique. It was in a size medium, it was in excellent condition, and I think kind of like a unique Kate Spade, kind of hard to come by piece. It sold for $50 on Closet Clear Out. The buyer messaged me saying that they were super interested and it had me Closet Clear Out, so we landed at $50, I changed the price, and they bought it right away, and it sold within 24 hours. This was another really great, really awesome, really random bundle that sold. I found this really unique Levi's by Andy Warhol denim jacket. It looked like this was a collaboration from quite a few years ago and there was a limited edition, there was only a certain number of pieces. I didn't find a lot about this specific jacket. There's another denim jacket that has like a pop art Marilyn Monroe on the back. If you ever come across that, make sure you pick it up. But this was another really beautiful denim jacket from the collection. It was in a dark denim and just like really unique details. There was a wide belt at the bottom and it was just a really gorgeous structured piece. This bundle also had a couple of Kate Spade enamel gold tone bracelets that were really lovely. There was a toque, a leather card holder, and a toiletry bag, and those last three pieces came from my Quick Lots half palette. The buyer sent an offer for $200 for those pieces, and I accepted. The jacket and the toque had been listed for 39 days, the bangles had been listed for five days, the card holder for 22 days, and the toiletry bag for 47 days. Right now, because of my half palette, I have a number of things in my closet that are like $15 and $20, and I think they're really great for bundling. They're probably not things I would normally pick up, but it's nice that they can be bundled together and people can pick up some random awesome things from my closet, and I am not going to complain about it. This was another one of my favorite pieces from the same consignment client. 
It's a Banana Republic silk dress. It was a midi dress. It had like a polka dot pattern and it was in this beautiful teal kind of turquoisey color. I just loved that dress. I got an offer from the buyer for $55 and I accepted and that took nine days to sell. Now I think the sun is in my eyes and I don't know how it looks on camera. I hope it's okay. Oh, this next sale was lovely. It was a pair of Citizens of Humanity high rise rocket skinny jeans in black in a size 32. That's a style that I've definitely sold before and I picked them up through retail arbitrage. They sold for full price for $175. They took a little bit longer to sell. They took 68 days, but full price sale, that was amazing. Oh, this was another great pair of jeans. So it was a rag and bone style that I hadn't picked up before, but because of the style, I knew it was probably gonna do well. These were the Nina high rise ankle flare jeans in a size 32. There were so many words, but they seemed like a great trending style. And they did well. They sold for $68 on an offer to Liker and took just over three weeks to sell. I feel like when I talk to my US reseller friends or watch their videos, they're like, rag and bone, it's not for me. But in Canada, they're still doing well. So I think I'll continue to pick up Rag & Bone, especially in these trendier styles. As soon as I listed this Kate Spade scarf, it got a lot of attention. It was so beautiful. It was forest green and it had this like forest print on it. So there was a fox, there was a little mushroom, a little owl. Oh, I just, I loved that scarf. Kind of wanted to keep it, but I was like, what? I don't need another scarf. Ashley, put the scarf on Poshmark. That's what I did. It sold for $45 in two days on an offer to Liker, and that was excellent. I still have a bunch of other Kate Spade scarves in my closet. They've gotten a bunch of likes, and so I anticipate that those will probably sell quickly as well. I don't sell a ton of purses just because I don't come across that many, but this was a beautiful coach bag from my consignment client. It was the Charlie leather tote bag in brown, and it was honestly the perfect bag for fall and like for someone heading back to the office or maybe heading back to school. It was a light brown leather, it was yellow on the inside, and it was in really good condition. It sold for $68 on an offer to Liker and took just two days to sell. I'm not sure that I've ever come across Hugo Boss while thrifting, and so I wasn't really sure how this dress was gonna do. It was called the Hermina dress, and it was a gray midi dress in a size 12. It had like short kind of half sleeves. It was slim fitting and flared out a bit, and it was lined. It seemed like a great basic fall dress. I just wasn't sure if it was something that folks would be looking for. I was wrong. It sold for $52 on an offer to Liker and sold in just two days. This was Boss by Hugo Boss. I guess there's probably like a couple of diffusion lines. Not super familiar, did a bit of research, comps were all over the place. Let me know down in the comments if you have any experience selling Boss by Hugo Boss, Hugo Boss, any other Hugo Boss lines with those words in them, let me know. So I have another new consignment client and a lot of her pieces are from really cool Canadian designers. And one of them was from a brand called Annie 50. Annie 50 is a Canadian designer based out of Montreal, I believe. And I know that years ago, I had at least one of their dresses that I purchased at the clothing show in Toronto. I was really excited to see these included and knew that they'd do well, even though Poshmark didn't have them listed as a brand because I knew that folks in Canada would know of Annie 50. So this was an adorable red and navy dress with some really beautiful details. It had like a bow in the back and buttons down the back. It was made of a really comfortable fabric and just like the perfect dress for fall to pair with tights and boots. Oh, I loved it. The buyer and I went back and forth a little bit on price, but it sold for $42 and that took just two days to sell. In my Quick Lots half palette, I got a couple of Michael Kors watches. I took them both to a local watch place to see if I could have the batteries replaced. One of them, he said it was gonna cost like $150 because it wasn't just like a watch battery, it was something different. So I was like, no. But I was able to replace the watch battery in this beautiful Camille Michael Kors watch. It was so blingy and beautiful and I knew that it was going to do very well. It sold for $155 on an offer to Liker within a day of me posting it. And I was really happy with that sale. I don't use the video feature on Poshmark a lot, but I used it for this watch to show how sparkly it was and also to show that the battery was working. That sale was on the last day of August and it was a great way to end off the month. Before I dive into some trends, how was August for you? I asked y'all earlier this week and it seemed to be a little bit mixed, but I would love to hear how your sales went and if there's any trends that you're seeing. I hope that things are picking up for you as we're in September, heading back to school, and also heading towards a new season. In terms of trends, you can probably pick up on some of them based on some of the sales that I shared. 
definitely items for cooler weather. So think sweaters, jackets, jeans, and cooler weather accessories like hats and scarves. Another thing you need to start thinking about is holiday items. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, Ashley, it's September, calm down. But in August, I sold a full on Christmas sweater in three days. It was a gray sweater. It had a dashing like dog wrapped around it. It was very cute, but I was like, who is buying Christmas sweaters in August? Oh, this person was, and that was excellent. I also sold the last banana split ornament. Friends, I sold all of those in July and August, and I am still in disbelief about it. If you missed that, basically when I got my Quick Lots half palette, I got 11 of the same sparkly banana split ornament. I managed to sell 10 of them this summer, and that is wild to me. So if you have any items for Halloween, Christmas, Hanukkah, any upcoming holidays in the next three to four months, now is the time to get them listed. The worst thing that happens is that you have to relist them a little bit closer to the holiday, but the best case scenario is that they sell quickly and you got in there early. Highly recommend getting those holiday items listed now. Some brands that I saw coming up included Kate Spade, which is great. I love Kate Spade. I love selling Kate Spade. I love buying Kate Spade. So it was really nice to have some gorgeous Kate Spade pieces in my closet that moved really quickly. Also good basics like Banana Republic and Zara. I think with those two brands, it really depends on the style. So be mindful of how seasonal they are, what they look like, the condition that they're in, and just how popular an item it might be. As I mentioned, Rag and Bone is still doing well for me for jeans, but just being mindful of the styles and also Canadian brands like Smash and Tess and Annie 50. I know sometimes when you see those brands or maybe you have some of them in your personal closet and you might feel uncertain about listing them because you don't see a lot of comps on Poshmark, but I think Canadian brands like those have enough brand recognition that they might not be for everyone, but the people who know them will definitely want to pick them up. Poshmark has the feature where if a brand doesn't pop up in their list, you can always add it. So don't be afraid of brands that don't show up on Poshmark's list, just add them anyway. For me, I always think about back to school season as kind of like a second new year. So it's made me think a lot about my goals heading into September and also just this little back half of the year. So for September, I really wanna list 200 items. That feels aggressive to me. It's more than I've ever listed before, but with the number of items I have from consignment clients, I think it's definitely doable. I also need to get through all that consignment stuff before I can go sourcing again, so that's gonna be a good motivation. I'd also really like to top my July sales. So I'm gonna keep listing, keep sharing, and doing all the things that I normally do that I know help to increase my Poshmark sales. I did a little bit of eBay in August. It wasn't a lot, but I need just to pay a bit more attention to eBay. I know I always say that. I did a bit in August, I just need to do a bit more. So that's another one of my goals for September. And now time for the announcement. I'm speaking at Poshfest and I am so excited. I'm gonna be speaking on a panel about self-care, mental health, and balancing it all, which is something that I am deeply passionate about, both as a reseller, but also as a human being. It's something that is so near and dear to my heart. And I honestly am just, I'm so grateful to be speaking on the virtual stage again. The agenda for Poshfest looks really great. And I'm so excited to see so many friends speaking on really great topics. And I'm really looking forward to October. Let me know down in the comments if you're gonna be going to Poshfest. If you're looking for something else to watch, I recommend checking out this video with my PFF Mar. We filmed this interview last year before Poshfest when we spoke together. Mar is an amazing reseller. She has so much wisdom to share. I love her approach and her attitude and she is just a fantastic human. So I highly recommend you check out that interview. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, now would be an awesome time to do so. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye friends.